Now this is one of the parabolic mirrors that we have, one of the big dish collectors, and this one's actually doesn't have a surface on the inside that's worth using, so I'm using this as a mold for the outside. What I'm going to be doing is taking wood and stacking it like this along, along a straight line, so this will give us our curve to follow. Now this dish is 55 inches in diameter. So that means that the material from this over to the other side stretched is probably about 70 inches. We only have four feet of material, so I'm going to measure 24 inches from this side, 24 inches from that side, and that's where our wooden supports are gonna be. We're then gonna run this eight foot long this way and attach our mirror to it. One shortcut that you can do, if you're going to rip these in half like I'm doing so that your base is uh, half, go ahead and mark all the way across these, then rip them. That way you only have to uh, do one. You can actually line, get all your 2x4s lined up like this. This is a good way to make sure that you're right on the money with what you're doing and they're not going to have any variations. So you get your 2x4 lined up like that instead of having just two like I have here. You're going to want to have three of them if you're ripping them. If not, if you're just going to use this as a base, you're going to want to have five two-by-fours. So you have them lined up. Lay your gauge on there. Make sure that they're all nice and even and square. And then just draw your line all the way across in one shot and you get it done that way. You can measure them all at the same time and save you from having to do ten different, or five different ones. So here's where we're at so far. I have ten of these for each size cut. You can see that they're staggering down. Now, one thing that you want to make sure of, if you look like this, down this way, you're going to notice that all of these are the exact same height. You look at them this way, and you're going to notice that this one's narrower and narrower. That's because I used different uh, sizes of wood. I, I used scraps initially. You're going to be ripping a 2 by 4 in half with this process, and it is uh, a little bit less than 1 and 3 quarters that you set the fence on the saw to. But that doesn't always give you the perfect center. So let's just assume that you waver a little bit. What you want to do is you want to make sure that your cuts go against what the uh, 2x4 company provides. Because they're going to make the 2x4s the same thickness regardless. I mean, they're really good at that. They do this stuff all day. So it's okay if they are shorter like this. You're going to notice this one is not as tall as this one. You just want to make sure that this is important because when we put these on, we're going to be putting these, we're going to be using the width this way to measure the distance between each other. So if you had them like this, they would be staggered when, when they're all different directions. So you want to make sure that these are the same thickness, okay? This is an older 2x4 from a totally different manufacturer. And you can see that even though this 2x4, they, they're always the same. So. The cut that you're going to be doing is across the face of the 2x4 like this. So even though you split it down the middle, you want it to go into the 2x4 like that. And it's really easy, the really easy way to figure this out. 2x4s usually have a pretty nice finish. They have a nice round edge. So what you want is you want that round edge. Uh, this is the rip. You can see the, I don't know if it'll show up. Here's a good example. This is the rip that I did with the table saw. Hey, you got your 17 degree piece right here. Now what I usually like to do is set your saw for the 17 degree cut, make sure you don't hit the power switch, come down, line it up nice and snug, and then you're going to want to put a mark on your saw. Exactly where you want that piece of wood to be. So your first base is going to be square. Now this is really interesting doesn't seem like it would work but it, it does keep in mind that we've got the the width of the 2x4 like this so if you were cutting a full 2x4 it would be like that not like this so the sharp part that you cut 
either goes uh, down or points straight up in the sky. We'll put it straight up in the sky. That way we've got factory cut, factory cut, and our cut doesn't have any any effect on the angle. So we've got this right here. And now we're going to compare this to our guy. You can see that they are almost identical. Very, very close. Now for the next cut, all that you do is put your saw back to zero, flip this completely over, take it all the way to that line, and cut. Your mark should stay the same. And we have two identical pieces. Alright, and the very last uh, cuts are the five inch chunks. They're just square cuts. So we're using... These need to be as accurate as possible, in other words you'll have little lumps on your center part. I have actually seen people use saws where they're holding it right there. I, don't do that. That's just this. Is a, you might mess the piece of wood up by cutting. You might have a little bit better grip with your hand. If you're really concerned about it, just get a small clamp that holds it in place. You just don't ever want to. Your, your hand should never be. Well, you see these little black lines here? They've got them right here on the saw that says no hands, no hands. Your hand shouldn't be there. I mean. So now you know the. You're not going to get these mixed up. It's kind of hard to do with these tall ones, but when you start getting over here, you can get halfway through your project, and if you've screwed several of these in place, you might damage the wood underneath, and it's just going to make things a lot harder. So we're just going to put a blue line across these. And again, you can go uh, call these number one if you feel like writing a lot. It's easier to just do it the other way. And these are going to be underneath, so nobody's going to see them. It's not really... If you do the other side, these will be sticking out. So do the inside. Nobody's going to see that. If you don't have different colored markers, you can put two stripes on this one. Three stripes on this one. We'll do one, two, three, four stripes on that one. So that's kind of close. We'll mix some blue in there. I got black and blue. You just want to make it easy for yourself when you're working, so you can just grab these because when you do something 60 times, repetitiveness can be a real pain. One, two, three. So then this one is going to sit in those lines. We're going to use the front line for everything right there. And that's why I said if you would have done it like this, you're, you're going to be different from here to here, the spacing in there. So by doing it just like that. One thing worth noting if you're using the bending a piece of plastic and the spray painting method on the table. These are not going to be perfectly symmetrical. You're going to have a little bit, one side a little bit higher than the other, possibly like that. So what you do is you pick a side, whether you want this side or this side, and you get it nice and square, and then you do your posts and your measurements. So this would be a post with the angle like that. That would be one, boom, 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 all the way down, however many points you want. You do it on one side, ignore the other side, so then when you build it on your piece of uh, plywood, or when you build it on your 2x4, you've got your posts on this side, and you use the same measurements on the other, so you're basically just mirroring this side over here. If you copy this, this side's going to be, you're going to have some a little bit higher here, different angles, different angles. So you just pick one side and go with it, and then the other side just make it the same, and you will have this perfect.